So today's video is all about the Olympus Pen Camera. Now if you don't know, I use the Olympus Pen Camera and I have done for years for all of my blog photographs, I film my YouTube on it, I film my vlogs on it, I do take pictures sometimes of my Instagram and also my Instagram stories, I use it for a lot. And I bought my first ever Olympus Pen, the Olympus Pen EPO7. Uh, and throughout time, after I'd written reviews on it and tips and tricks and things, I did then start working with Olympus. And I am now what is called an Olympus creator. And that means I work alongside Olympus and I help them produce tutorials for their Instagram stories about how to get the most out of your Olympus pen. It also means that most of my Olympus pens now and my lenses are gifted. They gift me their new models and also different lenses so that I can test them out, write reviews on them and talk about them online however I use them every day it is the only camera that I use I don't use any other brand except Olympus now I get a lot of DMS on Instagram because people know that I use the Olympus pen asking me about the camera most of the questions center around getting it out of the box trying to use it and feeling a bit disappointed at the pictures or even just not really knowing where to begin because as much as it is a point and shoot camera, you can get it out, you can shoot it on auto, it does have a few more intricacies to it than a standard point and shoot and that does confuse some people and they feel like they're just not quite sure where to begin. So because I get so many of these messages, I thought maybe the easiest thing would be to make a video and that way I could talk you through some of the things that I would do as soon as you've got your pen out of the box, talk you through some of the settings, some of the buttons so that you understand the basics of the camera and you can get shooting with it. And also I'm going to talk a little bit about how to get off auto, the first step to getting off auto and taking a little bit more control over your pictures using the pen. So I'm going to be using an Olympus Pen EPL 10 for this video, however this video is relevant for the 7, the 8, the 9 and the 10. If there's any differences I do mention which models feature which thing but on the whole you should be able to follow all of this, use these tips and tricks, use these menu adjustments on whatever Olympus Pen you have. So yeah, let's get going talking through the camera. So let's have a little bit of a look at some of the buttons and dials on the actual Olympus. So this is an EPL 10, but this is relevant for the 8, the 9, and some of the elements of the 7, but pretty much the 7 is the same. The design is just slightly different on the 7. So on the front, you've got your lens release button. So this is the button you press to twist and take off your lens. On the base of the camera, you have your tripod screw thread, you also have your um, battery and SD card slot, so you just slide the button across, click this button to release the battery, and press your memory card for it to ping out. So that's there underneath. Then on the top, we've got several uh, dials here. So the first one is your mode dial. So these are your different modes of shooting. You've got auto, you've got P, you've got A, S, M, video, art, AP and scene. And I'll go through them uh, in a little bit more detail later. So this is your um, shutter release button. So this is the button that you press to take pictures. But the actual dial on the outside also has a function. You can click through menus using this um, click wheel. You can click through pictures when you're viewing them. So this has different functions depending on what menu you're in. Here you've got your on off button, which is fairly self-explanatory. Here you've got your hot shoe. So this is where your um, flash clicks onto. So for the older models like the seven and the eight, I believe, you have a separate flash um, that comes with the camera. You slide this off and you click the flash on. For the later models, the nine and the 10, there's actually a flash hidden underneath this little section here. And that pops up uh, when you select flash, or you can also press that button there uh, for that flash to appear. Um, so that's your top dial buttons. Here you've got a couple of mode buttons. Again, these do different things depending on what menu you're in. This button here can give you a grid view of your photos. This function button here, this can zoom into menus, but it can also do other things depending on what menu you're in. On the back here, you've got various buttons. So this here is your record button, so that there is for video. Then you've got a menu button, that's just to bring up your main menus. 
info that will bring up more info about a particular thing on a menu and it will also bring up information about the picture and the settings that you're using. At the bottom you've got the play button, that's the button you press to view your photos and then you've got the trash can which is obviously your delete button. Here you've got a little click wheel. In the centre you've got the OK button, that's just your button to select and say OK when you're in various menus. And then you've got your exposure option here at the top, your flash option to the right, your self timer and shooting mode option to the bottom and your grid uh, which is essentially your focus grid uh, to the left. So the first thing you're going to want to do is put on your kit lens that comes in the box. All of the Olympus M Zuko lenses will fit your Olympus pen, which means you have a huge number of lenses that you can choose from. Included in the box is the kit lens. It is the 14 to 42. That means it can focus to a focal distance of 14 to 42 just by turning the lens. Other lenses that you can buy, lots of lenses that you've probably heard talked about at the 17 and the 45, they are not zoom lenses, they are fixed. Lenses is a whole other conversation for another video I think, but if you want to know how to detach a lens or attach your kit lens as soon as you've got it out of the box, here's how you do it. So to remove lenses you press your lens release button and you twist the lens round and release. And you'll see that on your lens um, section here of the camera, there is a little red dot and there's also one on your lens. When you put a lens on, you want those two red dots to line up and then you twist and you'll hear it click and that's your lens on. So press button and twist and off to release, line up the red dots and twist on to put on. And it's as simple as that and that's the same for every single lens. So once you've got it out of the box, one of the first things I think you should set up on your Olympus pen is what's called the super control menu. Now for some reason the camera doesn't come with this already set up, which is a tiny little bit annoying, but it is just one of those things and it literally does take 30 seconds to set it up. And once you've got it set up, you're going to have access to loads of settings really quickly with the touch of one button. So here's how you set up your super control menu. What you're going to do is you're going to press menu and you're going to see down the side here you've got different options now on the later models of the olympus pen you do get these um, information boxes that appear and it tells you what each section of the menu is on the earlier models i believe that you can press info and it will tell you those things so if you're unsure what a particular menu element is for or why you would use it or what it does to your camera just press info and the camera will tell you which i think is really really helpful so you're going to scroll down to the little uh, icon which looks like a cog and then you're going to press right to access that whole menu. Then you're going to scroll down to C1. Essentially what you want to access is this section here, control settings. So you're going to click right again on your wheel to access control settings. So as you can see here, you've got several options. Uh, so we're in auto first. So again, you're gonna press right. And there you've got two options. You've got live control and you've got live super control. So we're gonna scroll down to live super control and then press okay. And that's that now turned on. And we're gonna do the same for every single thing in this list. So this is for all your other options or your other modes, P, A, S and M. Press right, scroll down to super control, press okay. Scroll right down to super control, press OK. Scroll right, scroll down to super control and press OK. You can press menu to exit that menu or you can also press your shutter button. If you press your shutter button, that will always take you back out and into um, camera mode. Now, when you're in camera mode, if you press the OK button in the center of your wheel, you will get this menu and this is your super control menu and what this means is you're going to be able to access all of your settings really quickly, really easily. They are all in that menu and that's going to work now for every option on your mode wheel. So when you're in auto, when you're in P, when you're in A, you'll always be able to press OK and you'll get access to that menu. So in that menu are all of your settings that you're going to need. Now, if you first got the camera out the box, I wouldn't worry about a lot of these settings. The camera will be set up with the most likely settings that people will want to use and they're absolutely fine. So the main question that I get asked from people with their Olympus pen is that they get it out of the box, they start taking some pictures, usually inside, and they find that they're very yellowy, they're blurry, and they're just not that impressed with the quality. And this does happen a lot, and it did happen to me. And there's a few reasons for this. 
One is that the camera comes automatically with the warm colour turned on, which means that your pictures will automatically have a slightly warm yellowy feel. I'll show you how to turn that off in a minute. The second reason is if there's not a lot of light inside, the kit lens is not that sensitive to light. Um, that is why there is a flash, either separate for the EPO 7 and 8 or included and hidden inside the camera for the EPL 9 and 10. I don't use the flash um, and the way that you can get around it being a little bit darker inside is to move on from auto and start playing around with the ISO which is the camera's sensitivity to light and the other settings. However, if you are still in auto you might find that your pictures are too dark inside with the kit lens and that is just a matter of light. There is only so much low light that the kit lens can cope with. Now that's not to say that you can't ever take pictures inside. I would use the flash if you're at a party and it is dark. You can use nighttime mode using your flash so the flash is a little bit less harsh. There's lots of things that you can do and later on when I talk to you about trying to get yourself off auto and moving on to one of the slightly more complicated settings which is P, you will be able to control the brightness much much easier and I think you'll find that your pictures inside will improve. So to improve the other issue, which is the pictures looking slightly yellowy, we need to turn off one setting on the camera. And that is because there's a setting that says that the auto white balance has the warm color set to on, and we wanna turn it to off. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna cool your pictures down. You can, of course, later in editing, add the warmth back in, but I always think it's better to start with a less yellowy white balance. That's gonna help you just generally when you're shooting pictures inside. So to turn that setting off, here's how you do it. The first thing you're going to need to do is come out of auto. The camera won't let you adjust it in auto so just click your dial to any of the other options. I on the whole actually tend to shoot in A which is aperture priority so just click your wheel round. Press menu and you want to be again in cog so head down to that cog icon and press right and you want to be down on menu F. So head down to menu F and you'll see there you've got an option for white balance. White balance, so that's basically saying that the auto white balance is always going to be warm, that it's going to keep the warm colour of it on. I don't like my pictures too warm. If I want to add warmth, I always like to do it in editing. So I will always turn this off. So again, press right to get into that menu and just click down and that's going to turn it off. And what that means is your pictures are just gonna be that little bit cooler toned, especially when you're taking pictures inside. Um, that's gonna really help you out when you're just sort of starting out taking pictures. So that's one of the first things that I would do. So one of the other things that I choose to turn off on the camera is face priority. Now this is because I shoot a lot of things that aren't people. I shoot products, um, I shoot outfits, and sometimes I don't want actually the focus to be on my face, I want it to be on the handbag or on the necklace or. So often I will turn face priority off and this means I can control where the camera is going to focus. Now if you're going to use the camera, you know, for just general use, you're on holiday, taking pictures of friends and whatnot, I would leave face face priority on. That means that everybody's faces will be in focus and you can choose between face and face and eyes and that is going to help you get people in focus. So make a decision about whether you want that on and off. But to turn it off, here's how you do it. So to turn face priority off, you're not going to be able to turn it off in auto. So if you do shoot in auto, that's not actually going to be an option for you. But if you want to step up and start using some of the other functions to turn it off, Press your super control menu, and you're gonna see face priority here in the center. It's a little smiley face with an eye next to it. Press okay, and in there you've got three options. Face and eye priority on, just face priority on, and face priority off. Now I opt for it to be off, because sometimes I want my camera to focus on something else that's not the person, and that then means I've got a little bit more control over the picture. So when you're shooting in auto, there's not many settings that you can actually adjust because the camera's gonna do a lot of it for you. So when you press your super control menu, you're gonna be able to change some of these, but the ISO and the white balance, they're going to be on auto because you are on auto. So you're, you're limited in what you can change. However, there are a couple of things that you can do um, in auto. One of the things is to change how the camera focuses. So here in the corner, you're gonna see a little icon which looks like a button and a finger. And if you press this, you can tap between three options. So 
Image number one, which is a little um, finger with a line for it, that means that your touch screen, your touch screen um, for focusing is off. Tap it again, a square with a little finger, that means that you can tap an area to focus, but to take the picture you still need to press the shutter button. If you tap again, you'll get the button image with a finger. This now means when you tap the screen, not only will the camera focus there, but the picture will also take when you touch the screen. So off, tap to focus, and tap to focus and take. So one of the other things to quickly show you that you can access in the super control menu is the ratio of your image. So here, if you scroll down, you'll see that my images are currently set to 4-3. Uh, which is essentially a rectangle. And if you click OK, you'll see you've got different options here. So you've got 169, which is quite a long landscape images uh, image. So this is the right size this way around uh, for Instagram stories. You've also got 32, which is another uh, landscape uh, rectangle image. It's just a little bit longer and thinner. A lot of people use this size uh, to shoot for their blog. It's quite an editorial size but there's a lot more to crop off if you're gonna put it onto Instagram. Then you've got one by one, which is a square. So back in the day when you could only put squares on Instagram, this was perfect because you could just shoot every single image in a square and you didn't have to crop it afterwards. And then you've got three, four, which is uh, your rectangle shape, but orientated the other way, which means if you're on your camera's on a tripod um, or you want to take a picture low down, but you still want it to be portrait, um, this is a very, very helpful mode to have on. It means that you're not trying to twist the camera and things. So yeah, so that's in your super control menu there. So press OK. You'll find it here. Press OK to go into it and scroll along. Select the one that you want and press OK. So there is another little menu which you can access if you press this little uh, function button here which has the image of a grid on it. And that brings out this little side menu here. You can also access that by dragging your finger on the touch screen. And in here, you've got the saturation of the image, the color image of the image, brightness, you can blur the background manually in here, you can add motion, you can, you can do all sorts of things in this menu. I don't use this menu much, I must confess. Uh, when I first got the camera, I did. I used it quite a lot because um, it, it is probably before I learned how to put the soup control menu on um, it was the main menu that I thought that you could use um, so yeah it's a little bit nifty if you want to try some other little things especially if you want to change the saturation of an image a colour image uh, you can make the image warmer or cooler when you're viewing pictures you can press play to view pictures now I get asked all the time how can I get rid of all this information when I press play I don't see the image I just see um, all this uh, info settings all you need to do is press info that's all it is the info is just displayed so if you press once for info you get the time that the picture was taken and the number that it is on your memory card and things if you press again you get all the detailed information of what the ISO was at and all the levels and everything and, and whatnot so just press info if you keep getting that and you want to get rid of it super simple so if you find um, that uh, all your information has disappeared off the screen, again, it's probably going to be your info button. But this is actually really helpful for you because sometimes you want to shoot a photo like a flat lay and you want to see the whole image and you don't want all of this writing messing you up. So just press info a couple of times and that will take away all the writing on your screen and that means you've got a nice blank screen to take your image. So if you've been shooting in auto for a while and you feel like you want to make that step away from the camera choosing all of the settings and have just that little bit more control over your images, my suggestion to people when they ask me is to start shooting in P. And essentially P is like halfway between the more complicated mode settings and auto. It lets you change one setting. So in auto, the camera chooses all the settings. In P, you can control the exposure, which means you can control how light and dark your photos are and as I said this is one of the biggest problems I think people have with the camera sometimes their pictures are too bright they're too overexposed sometimes they're too dark this way you can control 
the picture. So by adjusting the exposure, the camera then adjusts the shutter and the aperture in order to compensate for the choices that you have made. And it's so simple, it just uses a click wheel to click it backwards and forwards, brighter, darker. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So if you are going to want to use P, which is called program mode, then all you do is click your mode wheel to P. The main thing is how easy it is to brighten and darken your pictures. And you're gonna be able to do that with this click wheel on top. And all you need to do is click left and right. So use this button here. And you're gonna see here on the screen, that is your exposure. This here is your shutter speed, this here is your aperture. Those two, they're being controlled by the camera and you're gonna adjust your exposure which is essentially gonna lighten or darken your image. So you're gonna click one way and you'll get a plus number which will make your images brighter and you click the other way and you will get a minus number and that will make your images darker and it's as simple as that. And the camera's gonna compensate, compensate and change these settings here in order to make the setting that you've selected work. And it's just a really quick way to brighten your images. It's so simple when you're shooting. You can just have your finger here and click left and right. You'll also still be able to access your super control menu and you will be able to change things like white balance from your super control menu. You'll also be able to um, change your ISO within this um, mode as well. It's a really, really quick way to brighten your images without having to worry too much about the settings. Um, of the camera. So that would be my suggestion if you just want to take your photography up a little step before moving on to these other settings. Okay, so quickly just to show you the um, click wheel options now that we're actually in camera mode and the camera is on. So I'm currently in P, so I'm just going to show you what these buttons do. So if you press up, uh, you're going to be adjusting your exposure. So obviously in P you can just use the click wheel to do that, but in other options like um, A in aperture and in manual, you have to use this up button um, to access your exposure. Access your flash by pressing right. So that's gonna bring up all of your flash options. Again, I very rarely use flash, but it is there. Press down to access your photo mode. So this is going to be whether it takes a single picture, whether it takes lots of pictures, you can access your self timer here. You can set up custom self timers. You can turn the camera on to silent. There's loads of options within there and I will show you them in another video if you are interested. And then press left and you're gonna access your photo grid. So this is essentially where the camera is focusing and you can change the size of the grid by using your click wheel on the top. So for example, if you wanna focus on a very small area of a photo, click it down to the one little square and then use your um, uh, function wheel here to click and put it exactly where you want it. So for example, if I'm gonna take a picture of somebody and I want it to focus on their face, I'm probably gonna put the little green square about there so it's in the center of their face and press OK and now you can see that your focus square is right where you put it. If you've got your uh, mode here set to press to focus you can actually use the touch screen, use your finger and move that little green square around to exactly where you want it for the picture and then press your shutter button to take as well. So in terms of the mode wheel, what the other modes are, so you've got auto which is basically the camera chooses all the settings for you. You've got program, which is when the camera chooses the aperture and the shutter um, settings and you choose just the exposure. A is for aperture priority mode. In this mode, you can choose the aperture, you can choose the exposure and the camera then adjusts the shutter speed accordingly. Shutter speed mode or shutter mode, um, this is the opposite to aperture mode, so basically you adjust the shutter speed and the ISO and the exposure and the camera chooses the aperture. In manual you can change everything um, and you have full control over every single setting. I shoot in aperture, I understand aperture very clearly and so that's the mode that I find easiest to shoot in. Every so often I will shoot in manual but it's very, very rare, and I pretty much never shoot in shutter. Then around here you've got video, um, so on the seven and the eight you can shoot uh, 1080p video, and in the nine and the 10 you can also shoot uh, 4K. And then under art, you've got all your art filters, 
AP is advanced photo mode. So in here, there's lots of different options for sort of advanced techniques that you can do. And in scene, scene gives you loads of options of different types of photographs you might be taking. You can select the closest one to what you're taking and the camera will then choose the settings. I might do a more advanced video talking through some more of these options on the dial. So let me know in the comments if that is something that you would want to see. But I'm not going to go into it today because this video is very much about getting going with the camera straight away and much more the basics. And that's it. That's a few little settings and tips and tricks that you can do to get your Olympus pen out of the box, start taking pictures and hopefully get you off auto and experimenting a little bit more with adjusting your settings. As I said, if you would like some more in-depth videos where I go into some of the other settings and some other tips and tricks for the camera and shooting and lenses and all of those things, then please, please, please let me know in the comments what specific areas you would want help with. And of course, do ask me any questions in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. So I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Please give it a big thumbs up if you did. Also do subscribe to my channel. There will be more Olympus pen content, but as always, just my normal day-to-day -day vlogging, fashion, home content, and you might enjoy all of that as well. But yeah, until next time, thank you so much for watching. Bye.